Today I'm gonna show you how to make a classic Chinese dish called liangpi. It's refreshing, it's spicy, it's really popular during summertime, and it's sort of a really strange member of the noodle family. Let me explain. For the past few months I've been researching and practicing how to make hand-pulled noodles and there has been a breakthrough, I'll update you guys very soon I promise. And I figured there's one thing really worth understanding before you dive into the whole hand-pulled noodle universe. And that's the different components of wheat flour. So check this out, this is gluten. Gluten is the protein found in wheat and it's what gives a noodle or bread dough its stretchiness. And I know this sounds a little bit abstract for now but that is exactly why liangpi is such a cool thing to learn about. It'll make sense in a second. We begin with a very simple flour, salt and water dough, which we're just gonna roughly combine and rest covered for about 45 minutes until it has fully absorbed the liquid. Now comes the fun part, we're covering the dough with water and then we wanna wash it, you know, just kneading it in the water like this. And do you see how cloudy that water gets? This is where things get interesting. What's happening is that we're washing out the starch and we're left with an increasingly pure ball of just gluten. So you need to change the water and keep washing at least four to five times until the washing liquid gets a lot less opaque and your gluten feels very stretchy and squishy but pretty solid. Yeah, this is gluten. Make sure not to toss that starchy water away though. Instead, we're gonna clear it through a fine strainer in case some gluten got in there and then set it aside for at least three hours. But don't worry, we're gonna make very good use of that resting time by steaming our gluten and also preparing the two secret sauces you need to have liangpi. All of that after a quick word from my sponsor. <laughs> This video is supported by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering all sorts of different skills. With a premium membership, you get unlimited access and you can join all the classes that spark your interest. And these could be useful skills for your studies or for your professional career or even for your everyday life. I'm sure you're always interested in finding smart ways to improve your cooking. I know I am. That's why I really enjoyed the class on making the perfect grilled cheese sandwich. That's some legit advice right there. And it's also incredibly affordable. An annual membership will cost you like what? Less than 10 bucks per month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can now get a two month trial for free with the link in the description of this video. And now let's get back to our Liang Pi. So we're first gonna tear our gluten into little pieces as much as possible. We don't want it to be one cohesive ball. I'm also adding a little bit of baking powder so this can rise a bit while we steam it in a second. And once everything is well combined and torn up, we transfer it to a plate, which we transfer to a steamer and steam this guy for around 20 minutes on a low boil. It's gonna come out lightly puffed and much, much firmer. So now let it cool for a few minutes and slice into small-ish cubes. So I know this steamed gluten, which by the way is pretty much the same thing as seitan, doesn't look like much, but its spongy and chewy texture is a great vehicle for aromatics and flavor. Speaking of which, let's work on those classic liangpi flavors. For a quick and easy chili oil, add some neutral vegetable oil of your choice, I'm using canola, into a cold pan and then add a bit of star anise and Sichuan pepper. Let those spices slowly steep in the oil while it heats up and in the meantime we combine chili flakes, sesame seeds and salt in some kind of heat proof container. Make sure to remove your aromatics from the oil before they burn but take that oil itself even further until it just begins to smoke. At this point you can drizzle it over your chili mix, I hope you do better than me, give it a good stir and add in a dash of Chinese dark vinegar while everything is still super hot, that's very important. Now transfer to a jar of your choice and this super aromatic, nutty, spicy goodness can last up to two months in the fridge to brighten up your dishes. Now let's make some Suan Shui, garlic water. I know it sounds a little bit weird but that's what gives Liang Pi its characteristic flavor. In a little saucepan, lightly toast star anise and Sichuan peppercorns. Add some water and simmer the spices for 5 to 10 minutes. In the meantime, mince some garlic and combine with a good dash of salt and sesame oil. Now, pour your infused water over the garlic, straining out the spices of course, and this is it, garlic water. A bit unusual, but goes perfectly with liangpi. Now normally you would make a third sauce, sort of a seasoned vinegar, but I'm lazy. So what I like to do is just add a pinch of sugar and a dash of vinegar to my garlic water and just call it a day. So let's just call this liangpi seasoning. 
And now, the hard part. This is what our washing water looks like after a few hours of rest. You can clearly see how the starch has set at the bottom. Our job is now to very, very carefully pour away as much water as possible while leaving the starch in the bowl. This is not easy. Now, the wet starch here is gonna feel hard and act extremely weird because it's a non-Newtonian substance, that's right. Search for oobleck if you don't know what I'm talking about. Just know that you will have to slowly, slowly agitate and stir it to get it liquid. This is the consistency I was going for. Now, you're gonna need a little pan like this one. Uh, make sure its bottom is completely even, nothing like this. This is not gonna work, you'll see. Um, and first, you very lightly brush the pan with oil. Now get your starch mixture, make sure it's very well mixed and no starch is sitting at the bottom and then ladle in a roughly one to two millimeter thick layer into your pan. I suggest shaking and moving it around a bit for the best distribution and then we drop it into a pot of boiling water which is a bit of an awkward experience, yeah? Uh, I'm realizing a wok would be much better here, however you need to be able to put a lid on it while you steam your liang pi for just about 90 seconds. So that's why I went for the big pot. You can then take it out and rest it for at least two minutes so it can set a bit and then use a rubber spatula to help yourself get the liang pi out of the pan which is actually much easier easier than you'd expect. Lastly, stack your liang pi on a plate and just lightly brush with a little bit of oil so they don't stick to each other. All of these elements can be prepped in advance really, really well and when it's time to serve, here's what we do. Grab a few of your liang pi skins and roll them up. Slice them into white strips and then separate with your fingers. Thanks to the oil, they shouldn't be very sticky. Then transfer to a bowl, add a small handful of our steamed gluten cubes and shredded cucumber. Then top with a few spoons of garlic water and of course, as much chili oil as your heart desires. I hope you learned something today. If you try this delicious recipe at home, make sure to take a snapshot and show me how you did over on Instagram. And I hope to see you in the next video. This video was brought to you by Undong's epic Patreon supporters. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell for weekly food inspiration from all over the world.